There has long been talk of ancient civilizations disappearing into the inside of this planet, into caverns, caves, and then some resurfacing, some of those lineages alive today, and they tell their story in different ways, but a lot of them overlay in the same way to where these civilizations vanish and they have either left the planet and gone to the heavens or they've gone inside the planet. The interesting thing about the Hopi, their story, their history, specifically states that they had to go inside this planet and hide following a, a big white light across the country took them inside the planet where they were taught how to grow, how to do all these other things. And then the cataclysm happened. And then later, they came out of the earth. The Hopi prophecy, Hopi elders here recently, in the past few years, he came out and stated that that spot was the Grand Canyon in the United States. They're not the only ones. Many civilizations have stories just like that where there was some time in history where they had to go into the inner parts, the inner chambers of this earth. And this is an area of which a lot of people throughout history have been chasing, have been trying to find. If you look back at World War II and right, right before it, leading up to it, Hitler was hell-bent on trying to find what was inside this planet and the entrances. He even went to Tibet, talked to the monks, and then even stated that their new mother base was in Antarctica. It was impenetrable. No one could get to it. So what was so important about all this? What about the stories of Admiral Byrd that are real military documented events of when they went to the poles, his encounters of flying into a hole, encountering these disc-shaped aircraft that had swastikas on them. Now, how was that? Now, when they were fighting the Germans and everything else, they took up the swastika. But why did they? Hmm. This wasn't Nazi troops that encountered him in the military encounter. A lot of the stuff put out in diaries and everything after he died from his son, secrets this guy took to the grave, and then other stuff was known that's out there. All the stuff that went on at both poles, what he talked about, other stories that talk about the butterflies up here in this hemisphere. How could it be? Northern Greenland butterflies? Well, all these stories give credence to something else going on on this planet. It's no secret that they fly all the flags of every nation down there at the South Pole, but yet they want to act like they're on the verge of war out here on the world stage. Every expedition that has ever been launched or thought up to try to get to the North Pole, the Oceanic Depression North Pole, has been stopped every time. The Oceanic Depression, that area itself, is very interesting. And what is at the heart of it? Well, if you look at any satellite map, they always show you a composite that has a big black hole right there. And they want to tell you that the reason is because satellites cannot magnetically fly over this area. They'll fall out of the sky or whatever. They can't get the data. Okay? That was their excuse. Now, step into the real world of this hole is a physical hole that stays here. The one that's moving is the magnetic pole. You know, the magnetic pole that would knock satellites out of the sky per what they say. But if that magnetic pole is moving, then why isn't this black hole on all the composites moving? Because it's not. It's not. It's still there in the same spot. Yet they want to say our magnetic pole is racing towards Siberia. Yet in the same spot in the Oceanic Depression, we have a big black hole blacked out. 
Opposite of that, on the other side of the planet, obviously Antarctica and the mystery and the speculation of a massive underground complex and who knows what else they've discovered because they keep so many secrets from man. So I say all this and it brings me to new talk here about scientists hinting that there are mountains inside of the planet that are larger than Mount Everest. Now, depending on what site is kicking out this information, it depends on how it's going to be consumed by the people. You have to use discernment. Right out the gate, one of them say, although this doesn't prove anything in hollow earth, right out the gate. Why would they say that? They say nothing in the article to disprove it. Nothing. Besides the opening stanza of saying that, and that's off of a pretty dominant uh, outlet out there that I think is buffaloing the people in terms of the subject. Well, all the main governments of the world are. It's in my belief, just as it's written in your good book, the fallen ones are here. They have been. You know, Michael did battle with the dragon, cast him down here, locked him there. They're here. They always have been. Well, they got the whole world and your history channel uh, got people anticipating little green men from deep space. They're here. They always have been. It's written. It's no secret. They even flooded this planet out because it got so chaotic. They were eating people and everything else. You know, the Nephilim, the ones that landed on Mount Hermon, they came into the women of this planet and they bore giants. Yeah, those guys... Yeah, they're still here. And the leaders of this planet believe they are the offspring of them. Do you get it now? Fall back to sleep. If not, turn a cheek, make up an excuse. This is the truth. Unlike, you're going to hear it anywhere else because none of these shells out here want to speak on it. Because they know this is the power structure. And they don't want to dare step on the toes. Because they don't want to get cut off or threatened or anything else. They want you stuck in the left-right paradigm, choosing from their choices and not seeing what is really going on out here. You know, if you really want to know the structure and the nature of this planet or get a better idea, because there's a lot of theories, a lot of theories, okay? And you have to know a PSYOP when you see one. When the government comes out and says, oh, no, this thing's a big flat square, what do they do? They remove the poles and they remove people from concentrating on the poles, they sure do. And they go down all these other rapid holes. But when you ask common sense questions, like if it's a flat square, then how does the equator fit into that? How come there's not a square shadow cast it? Or anything else like that. Common sense questions that dissolve their theory right there. But when you look with a telescope and with your own eyes to other heavenly bodies that you can see, the moon, our sister planet Venus, you start to see some pretty crazy things. For one, the moon, when they smashed a capsule into it, it reverberated like a bell. They did this twice. Like a bell. Hollow. If you look to our sister planet, Venus, do the research, Google it, look it up. Don't just take my word for it. You'll see that Venus has two holes. In its poles. Hmm. And you also see that it has these beautiful auroras. And this huge spinning energy. This vortex. Dynamic vortex that's getting sucked down into these holes in the poles. And it's no secret. They're there. You can see it in all the imagery. From all the different space agencies out there. And you can actually see these holes in these poles in other planets. Even Saturn. In the hex that it holds on this planet that's hidden right in front of you. There's a major storm system in that geometric pattern on Saturn. You can find it around the South Pole at times on this planet as well. I've shown it in other videos. Casey's talked about it. The connection between the two. In the moon, I believe, is an amplifier. It is an artificial structure towed into perfect position. For what? Could be doing a lot more than what people could even wrap their head around. I believe it's affecting frequencies and energies 
that are coming in from the sun and from all of the cosmos, and it's distorting them, dishing out a whole different uh, vibration, so to speak, onto the planet, keeping it bogged down on a lower level. It's kind of like the Death Star, so to speak. I believe there's intelligent life there, whether you guys believe it or not. It's all over. I believe the whole cosmos is filled with life like Star Wars and Star Trek combined. And we are locked here, just as it tells you. We are locked here in these watchers or these fallen ones. They are here. They are here, you see. This is who gives all the, the leaders of the world their, their powers and their technologies, their anti-gravitics, all their lasers, all their weapons, everything they got. This is a puppet show. This is about control of masses is what this is about. When you awaken to this and you see where we sit, you start to see that there's a lot here hidden in plain sight. A lot of history is out here. Of course, they're trying to cover it up. But when you go down all these roads, you see that they're all telling the same story over and over and over and over again, all the way back to the ancient days. Back to what you would consider to be Lemuria, Atlantis days. Ancient, ancient Egypt days. Where they want to cover up and distort all that. Now, I believe the earth was set up on a natural grid cycle. Matter of fact, we have individuals that said this, that wrote about this, like Thoth. That had wrote down in record that this planet was set up like this until there was a battle in the heavens. Here we go with another battle in the heavens. And then references to Mars and these male dominant entities that came here, cast it down here, came here. They came here, they were here for a short time, and then that's when all hell broke loose. Atlanta sunk, went down. Everything was thrown off, was thrown out of its natural balance. As the pyramids were power plants, sending out energy to Oblisk, just like, te just like Tesla Towers. Do you see this now? The whole world was set up on this natural grid system that they took away from you. They crushed it so they can control you. With fiat, oil, and money here in a monopoly game here on this planet where your money's not backed by nothing. Do you see how sick of a game this is now? And they're breaking it down as doing it different in every little country. And it's a puppet show. If they truly do not like the leadership, they remove them rather quickly. You've seen what happened to Gaddafi. The rest is puppet shows. It's a calling of masses caught up in the middle. And they're doing this to appease something that is hiding behind humans. That's what's happening here, ladies and gentlemen. So when they hint at... Big earthquakes in Bolivia, which, which is what sparked this. It's usually stories like this that get me going like this because they say, oh, there's massive mountains, subterranean landscapes deep inside the planet, bigger than Mount Everest. Really? Hmm. It just reminds me of what the Hopi said. Where'd the Mayan go? Where all these other ancient civilizations connected. And there's a lot of debate, and there will continue to be a lot of debate in terms of the shape and the ongoing structure and the dynamics of this planet. But don't get lost in it. A lot of us have a lot of ideas that are very similar and that I believe mesh into the truth. Other parts out there are part PSYOP that the government is pushing to try to steer you clear in a way from the truth. And I can't help but think that within the past decade, when we really brought up Hollow Earth and the possibility of it, and all the connections about seven years ago, that's when they started pushing their psyops full-blown out here with no proof. When we started asking their theories honest questions like, okay, how does an equator that we can prove by going down to it, water spins and goes down one way in the north and then the other in the south, how does that fit into your equation? And they can't answer you. There's never nothing but some, some trickery of illusion of video photography trying to show you whatever they're trying to prove with no science backing it. That stuff goes out the window with me. As soon as you have something of substance with some scientific evidence, then we can talk. 
But like I said, when you look at your sister planet, other heavenly bodies, you look at the moon and everything else, it's telling us that these structures around us have holes in their poles and they're hollow. Why would ours be any different? Hmm? Things to think about. Anyhow, I'm going to do a live stream on this coming up if I can get Casey to join me. I know he's busy and I'm um, going to try to get him a link up here so we can talk about this in detail. So stay tuned for more. I'm going to leave some links here. My thoughts on this. And uh, a much love to everyone out there. I want to thank everyone out there that shares information, that fights the fight on the daily, through and through. And I appreciate everyone that has our back and keeps us in their prayers out here fighting this fight on the daily. Follow me on Twitter for more. It's been Dabu7. Much love, y'all.